In this video, we're going to talk about factoring out the GCF. Now, this is very important because every time you factor, step one will be to try to factor out the greatest common factor. And that doesn't mean there's always going to be a greatest common factor, but that's always going to be what the first thing we check for is. So when I look at number one, I'm going to try to factor out the GCF. So the first thing I'll do is look at the two coefficients in 16 and 40 and figure out what is the biggest factor they have in common. So in this case, that'll be 8. The next thing I'll check is if they have any variables in common, and they don't. So no variable will be part of the GCF. So to factor out the GCF, you simply divide each term by the GCF. So I'm going to divide each term by 8 to see what's left inside. So I'll get 2x minus 5. Now afterwards, you should check uh, to see what size the polynomial that's left is to see if it'll factor any further. But in this video, we're just factoring out the GCF, so we're not going to worry about that. Number two, again, start with the coefficients. Do they all share something here? Yes, the greatest common factor of 12, 15, and 27 is 3, so I will factor that out. And again, they all don't have the same variable in common. Even though these two have an x in common, this last one doesn't, so x is not part of the GCF. So let's divide each term by the GCF, 3 in this case, to see what's left. So I'll have 4x squared minus 5x plus 9. Sorry, minus 9. And remember, I can always re-multiply this to get back to the beginning, and that's an easy way to check that you did it right. On number three, we'll look for the GCF. We'll start with the coefficients. What do 20, 10, and 5 have in common? It's going to be 5. And this time, they all have a D, so D is definitely part of the GCF. Now, to figure out the GCF for D, you figure out what's the smallest exponent of these three. So we've got 5, 3, and 2, so the smallest exponent is 2. So that's the GCF. So now I'm going to divide each term by the GCF. 20d to the fifth divided by 5d squared is 4d to the third. Negative 10d cubed divided by 5d squared is negative 2d. And don't forget this last term. People sometimes leave this last term out because they think it's the same. But what's 5d squared divided by 5d squared? Well, that's going to be po positive 1. And again, I need this last term here because if I were to distribute, that'll lead me to three terms. If I left this out, I would only have two terms when I redistribute it. Now, number four looks pretty scary here. There's lots of variables. It looks really nasty. But just take your time, and these problems are generally not that difficult. In fact, generally speaking, when you get a problem like this, all you have to do is factor out the GCF. So between 7, 10, and 6, the only factor they have in common is 1, and I'm not going to factor that out. So let's move on to the variables. Now they all have an x, so x is definitely part of the GCF here. And the smallest exponent on x is 2. Let's check y. They all have y as well, so y will also be part of the GCF. And the smallest exponent on y is 3. Now for z, they don't all have z. You can see the first term is missing z, so it's not part of the GCF. Now I'm going to divide each term by the GCF to see what's left. 7x cubed y to the fourth over x squared y to the third is 7 y. Divide this middle term by the GCF and you'll get minus 10 z. And for the last term divide by the GCF you'll get plus 6 x to the fifth y to the fifth and z cubed. And that's it for that one. One special case of factoring out the GCF is when they all have a binomial in, co in common. Now this will become particularly important when we learn a strategy called grouping. So if you look at each term here, you can see that they each have an, a binomial of x plus 2. So that whole thing is going to be the GCF. So I'm going to factor out an x plus 2. So I'll divide each term by x plus 2. It's the same thing even though it's a binomial. And all these x plus 2's will cancel out. And what's left is y plus 5 plus 3x. And that's how this factors. Over here, you can see they both have an x plus 4 in common, so I can factor that out. And divide each term by x plus 4, the x plus 4s cancel out. And what's left over? 5x plus 2. Down here, you can see they both have a 5 minus c, so that's the GCF here. It's a binomial. So we'll divide each term by 5 minus c, which will cancel it out. And what's left over? ab minus 7, and that's the other parenthesis. 
And one last time, you can see they both have a 2AB, so I will pull that out, divide it out. Over here it cancels out, you get B. Now over here you're going to have 2A plus B divided by 2A plus B, which cancels out, but it cancels out to 1. So make sure you have that there. So there's a look at GCF factoring.